Welcome. In this lesson, we are going to use SketchUp to learn to draw and calculate the surface area and volumes of different shapes. You'll get to draw the shapes in SketchUp and take the measurements like you see here, and you'll be able to learn how to use a calculator to figure out the surface area and volume of different shapes. So not only will you learn how to do the math problems, but we'll also use SketchUp as a calculator to help you check your math. Before we get started, I'm going to show you how to use some of the tools that we'll be using as we progress throughout this lesson. And also, to open and access this model, please check the link in the video description below. There are three ways to navigate around in 3D. One is to orbit, like you see here. The second one is to pan, or otherwise slide your model around on the screen. And the third one allows us to zoom our model in and out like this. And if you combine these three, you can get your model exactly where you want it on your screen. To orbit, select the Orbit tool from the left side toolbar. Once you select it, you'll see the Orbit tool on the end of your mouse pointer. And if you click and drag on your model, you can orbit your model around. You can click and drag left and right and up and down. And if you click and drag, and release your mouse and then drag in the same direction over and over, you can move your model around backwards or upside down or really any combination of directions so that you can get any view that you want just by clicking and dragging with the orbit tool. The pan tool is found right next to the orbit tool and it's an icon of a hand. If you click and drag, you can slide your model around on the screen. You can click and drag left and right, and up and down. And this can be helpful in placing the model exactly where you want on the screen so that you can work on it. The last navigation tool is the zoom tool and you can get it by clicking on the magnifying glass in the left side toolbar. Now with the zoom tool, if you click and drag up or down, you can zoom your model in or out. And the zooming happens in the center of the screen, as you can see here. So if you want to zoom in on a particular object, you can use the hand tool to move it to the center of the screen and then click and drag with the zoom tool to zoom in or zoom out. For drawing tools, we're going to be making a lot of rectangles. So we're going to use the rectangle tool on the left side toolbar. You get to it by selecting rectangle and then clicking and releasing somewhere on the ground. It's key to click and release. And once you release your mouse pointer, you will have the other side of a rectangle attached and you can move it around and resize it as you'd like. The reason we do the click and release is as you move that mouse pointer around, you can see that the size of your rectangle changes in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Now, if you clicked again, your rectangle would just be set down at whatever dimension you see at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, but we want to be more explicit about the size of our rectangle. So before clicking again, you can actually start typing the size of the rectangle and press enter and the rectangle will be created at the exact dimensions that you type in. This gives us the opportunity to make perfectly sized rectangles. Now, if you haven't clicked anywhere else when you type in your dimensions, you can change the dimensions by just typing them in again and pressing enter and you'll see that your rectangle will change size according to whatever you type. Practice rectangles a few times to get the hang of them. The next tool that we're going to use, and arguably the most important tool in SketchUp, is the push-pull tool. And this lets you take 2D things and make them into 3D, just like this. You can do this on any flat surface in SketchUp. So we'll show you how to use it here. Find the push-pull tool in the left side toolbar and then hover over a face. And you'll see when you hover over a face that you can push pull, it'll get this speckled blue surface on it. Once you see that surface, click and release on that surface and move up or down to extrude or otherwise push pull the face like you see here. Now the reason we're doing a click and release is that as you move up or down, you can see the amount that we've pushed or pulled change in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And so very similar to how the rectangle tool worked, we could click on the screen to accept the current position of our push-pull, or we can type in our own number, which is what I'm going to do here. And once that number is typed in and I hit enter, the push-pull will snap to that exact height. 
And if you haven't clicked anywhere else, you can type in another height and press enter and your push pull will snap to that height. This is important for accurately sizing our cubes that we're gonna use later on. Next, we're gonna learn how to put some dimensions on our drawing and you can find the dimension tool here in the left side toolbar. To make a dimension, there are a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, the first one is on a cube like this, you can actually just hover over a line that you want to dimension until it turns blue. Click and release, and then a dimension line is pulled away from that line. And you can put the dimension uh, in a couple different locations like you see here. When you click again, that dimension is set down. Now the other way that you can make a dimension is to go from point to point. So here I'm hovering over one point, then moving my mouse over to another point where I want my dimension to terminate, I can click on each of those points, pull the dimension away, and then click again, and I will get a dimension that is parallel to the two points that I just clicked on. And the last tool that we're gonna use is the Label tool, which you can find right below the Dimension tool in the left side toolbar. Labeling in SketchUp is pretty simple. All you do is click and release on the start point of your label. Um, it can be just about anywhere in your model, it just has to be on an object. Move your mouse away, click again, and then you will get a box that might show some information about the thing that you started your, la your label on, or you can just delete that text and type in whatever text you'd like. I'll make a second label here by just clicking and releasing right on this face, dragging away a little bit, clicking again, I can just delete the text that SketchUp has put in there for me and type in whatever I'd like. And labels are three-dimensional, so as you orbit around your model, your labels, uh, the text of them will always face the screen, but the lines will be um, in 3D. We're going to jump into the lesson next. I'd recommend practicing these steps before you jump in just to make sure you have them all down. So let's get started on our first model. When you first open up this lesson, you'll be here at step one. You can see it on the whiteboard. If you need to move around while you're drawing, you can use the orbit, pan, and zoom tools, as you see that I'm doing here. You can use these when you're at a particular step and you need to get the view just so, so that you can draw your shape. And we'll also use these as we move between steps, because all of the steps are contained on different whiteboards in this model. So let's start drawing our first shape by selecting the rectangle tool from the left side toolbar. Click and release and start moving your rectangle in this direction like you see on the screen. If you're paying attention, look in the bottom right hand corner and you'll see the numbers which represent the size of the rectangle change as you move your mouse around. Now without clicking anywhere, we can set our rectangle to be a particular dimension. In this case, it's going to be 1.5, 0.5. After you type in these dimensions, make sure that you press enter so that your rectangle snaps to that size. It's a good idea after you draw any object to orbit, zoom, and pan a little bit just to get a look at what you've done to make sure it's what you want. Here I'm just orbiting around a little bit and our rectangle looks great. Next let's add some dimensions to our rectangle. In the left side toolbar, select the dimension tool. Hover over one corner of your rectangle and then another corner like you see here. Click on each corner, pull away, and then click again. So that's three clicks total, and that will set the dimension, in this case on the left side of the rectangle. You can do the same thing for the front side by again clicking in one corner, clicking in another corner, and clicking a third time to set the dimension in place. And then you'll have a dimension for each side of your rectangle. We also need to label our dimensions as well because some people may say left or right or front or back and when you're doing math you need to be specific so we're going to put some labels on our rectangle. Select the label tool from the left side toolbar right under the dimension tool. Click and release on one side of your rectangle and click again and a text box will come up. You can delete the dimension that's in there and you can type in the label that's appropriate for that side of your rectangle. We'll repeat this step again for the length of the rectangle. Grab the label tool, click and release, click again to set your label down, and then the text box will pop up. Use the backspace or delete key, delete what's there. And in this case, we're gonna type in length, parentheses, L, close parentheses. And then click anywhere outside and your label will be set in place. 
Now we're going to pause and you can do your math formula to figure out the area of this rectangle. The instructions will be in the accompanying slides for this lesson. You can use the 3D text tool to put your answers on the whiteboard in your model. The 3D text tool will open this dialog where you can type in your answer. You can leave the rest of the settings the same. Just go ahead and click OK. And once you do that, your text will be attached to your cursor. And just move it around so it sticks somewhere on the whiteboard like this. Click to lock it in place. If your text is too big or too small, you can go over here and click the scale tool and grab the scale grips and you can make the text smaller or larger so that it fits appropriately on the whiteboard. You can also use the move tool if you want to move your text around if you don't like where it's placed. If you want to make your text pop a little bit, you can click the paint bucket tool on the left side, then pick a color from the right and click right on your text to make it a nice fun color so it really stands out. Now that you're back from doing your math formula, you can actually check your work in SketchUp. Do this by clicking the Select tool in the left side toolbar, then clicking directly on the face of the rectangle that you just created. Then in the top right, click on the Entity Info and you'll see the area of your rectangle displayed right here. And remember, this isn't a substitute for doing the math, but it's a great way to check your work. Now we're going to move on to step two. You can do that by finding the pan tool where we've previously found the orbit and zoom tools. And by using the pan tool, you can just click and drag and that will slide you over to the whiteboard that shows step two. And this is where we are going to figure out the surface area of a 3D box. So once you get to step two, you can use the zoom tool to zoom in a little bit so you get a view like this. We'll start by selecting the rectangle tool just like we did in the first step. Click and release in the first corner, then move your mouse and make the rectangle in the second corner, but don't click. Just like the last time, uh, type in the size of the rectangle, in this case 1.5 comma 0.5 and press enter to create a rectangle. Now we're gonna give our 3D box some height. In the left side toolbar, find the push-pull tool and select it. Click and release on the face of your rectangle and move it up like you see here. As you move it up and down, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, the height of the rectangle change. Without clicking again, type in one and press enter and that will make this rectangle exactly one meter tall. And you'll see as soon as you press enter, it will snap to that height. Now we'll add some dimensions to our box. We'll use the dimension tool just like we did with the rectangle tool. Click on one corner and then another corner and click again as you pull away to set the dimension down. We'll repeat the same thing for both the top, the side, and the front. So here I'm clicking on one point, clicking on another point, moving my mouse pointer to the left, clicking again. We'll do the dimension for the front and again we'll click one corner click another corner, move the dimension away, and click again. And you've got your dimension set down. So now we're gonna use the label tool just like we did before to label each dimension. Click and release, and then click again to set your label down. And when you do that, you're gonna get the opportunity to delete the text that's in there and type in your own text. Label everything as you see here. I'm gonna do the width first, and then I'll go ahead and do this one here. Just delete the text that's in there. I'm going to label this one as height and repeat the same for the last label until you have all three sides of your 3D box labeled appropriately. This is a good opportunity now to use the orbit, pan, or zoom tools to take a look around at what you created. Uh, move them around a little bit, make sure that your dimensions are correct, that your box looks like what it's supposed to, and that your labels are all correct. If it turns out you drew your box a little bit too close to the front of your whiteboard, you can press the select tool in the left side toolbar, click and drag to select the box and all the dimensions in the labels, and then click the move tool to move it out of the way. Press pause in the video here and look at the instructions on how to do the math to calculate the surface area of this box and then come back when you're done. 
use the 3D text tool just like we did in step one to place the answers for this formula directly on the whiteboard. After you've done your math, you can actually use SketchUp as a calculator to check your answers. Here you can see we've got the surface area of this entire 3D box. To do this, make sure you have the Select tool or the Arrow tool picked from the left side toolbar. Then, while holding down Shift, click on each of the faces that you can see here. As you select the faces, they will turn blue to indicate that they've been selected. Now being careful not to click anywhere else, click on the Orbit tool and click and drag right on the center of the 3D box. You may have to do this a couple times to orbit around to sort of look up from the bottom of it. When you do, you can go back to the Select tool, immediately hold down Shift, and select the three remaining faces so they turn blue like you see them here. Being careful not to click anywhere else, you can orbit back to view the front and confirm that you have all six of the faces of the 3D box selected, as you can see here. You can then click on the Entity Info box on the right side toolbar, and this will show you the area of all of the faces that you have selected. You can confirm that you have the right amount of faces selected by seeing the face count right above it. So here we have six faces selected, and that means that SketchUp is calculating the area of all six of those faces at five and a half meters. For this next step, we're going to be calculating the volume of a 3D box. The box is the same as we drew in the last step, so just go back and follow those steps and create a box just like you're seeing here, put the same dimensions and the same labels on it, and then we'll pause and go do our math problem. So pause this video and go do your math problem, and when you're done, come back here and we'll show you how to check your work. To check your work, you're going to want to pick the Select tool from the left side toolbar. Then you're going to want to click and drag from the top left to the bottom right to select your whole cube. Alternatively, you can triple click on the box by clicking 1, 2, 3, and that will also select the whole thing. After you do that, right click and select Make Group. With your box still selected, you can go over to the Entity Info button on the right side toolbar. When you click it, this drawer will slide open and it will show you information about your box. Here you'll see the volume calculation right here, so you can check it against the formula that you did to make sure that it is correct. The last thing you'll want to do here is put in your answer using the 3D text tool like we've done in previous steps, and you are all set. Congratulations, you have learned to calculate area and volume using SketchUp.